we're on the move again. I am in Toronto, right downtown. I'm on Adelaide, and I think that's Simcoe. Uh, CN Towers right there, as you can see. So I have a meeting, a very important meeting with Studio 71. I don't want to join an MCN. I just want them to be basically like my agent, possibly like my manager. I'm not sure if I want to go exclusive or not with them. Uh, basically, you know, MCNs take anything from 0% up to 30%. I think their initial offer was 30% of my income that I'm making now on YouTube. Apparently, when you sign up with certain MCNs, they put better ads against your videos, and you're supposed to be making more money and better revenue, uh, but there's no real proof. Like, I've never seen any proof of uh, more revenue from an MCN other than them getting you sponsorships. So I did the whole emails with them back and forth, worked things out, did Skype calls, worked things out. Now it's handshake time. Uh, handshakes are very, very important in the world of business. While we're down here, I thought maybe we would do something extra on the side. This should only hopefully take about an hour or less. I was thinking maybe like visit Burgers Priest. We got smoked poutinery, we got burrito boys. Uh, and then we also have way down there is the Hockey Hall of Fame. I've never been. I'm good till six o'clock for parking. I have to leave around 2.30. So hopefully this meeting doesn't take too long. Then we'll zip over and do the Hockey Hall of Fame and uh, show you around. Again, I've never been. I can't wait to show you what I've never seen before. Meeting time. gentlemen all done the meeting I was supposed to go my meeting was supposed to start at 11 08 and uh, I'm sorry 11 o'clock it's 11 08 right now so bonus so I went in talked to uh, my possible manager and uh, through our emails through our skypes I kept saying over and over again I don't want to sign with an MCN I'm looking for an agent, talent manager, whatever. And then just split the money that way. And even even in the, the meeting that we were talking, that's what I kept saying over and over again. And then I basically said, okay, everything's good. Let's sign up. And then uh, he wanted bank information for monthly deposits. I'm like, why monthly deposits? Oh, for your AdSense. And then everything just fell apart <laughs> from there because I'm like, ah, that's not what I wanted. So, oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep on it, think about it. I know a lot of people say don't sign up with another MCN, uh, but you got to try things once in a while. One of the coolest things about this MCN is I know exactly where, they're, where they live. So if things weren't happening, I can always take a little trip downtown Toronto and talk to them face to face. Let's start the rest of our day. It's about 1.2 kilometers. I just checked the maps to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Let's go check out the Hockey Hall of Fame. A lot of you guys know I used to come down here uh, for college, for uh, graphic design college from 1988 to 1991. And it was so cool, you know, walking this route every day and seeing this beautiful church and all these uh, amazing buildings. It was pretty cool college. Well, I overshot the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame by a couple blocks. So I started coming back this way and then I saw that they finally opened up this uh, fountain. Let's go check it out. So 
what we got like St. Bernard's. A lot of pugs. I'm not sure, that's a Scotty, I believe. We got a, a bulldog. And we got a, looks like maybe a Dalmatian up at the top. Very cool. Well done, Toronto. Okay, that's a nice little pit stop. Off to the Hockey Hall of Fame. So originally this bank uh, was a BCE place. It's a historic bank and uh, they turned it into the Hockey Hall of Fame in June of 1993. So it's been around a long time. Let's go get our tickets and enjoy. There's a sign. Guys, I don't you guys on the Very cool. The other half of the bank is on the inside of this building. So the Hockey Hall of Fame is downstairs, apparently. The food court. Is it like walking down escalators, or do you just stand there? Sir, how are you? Are you good for yourself? Just one. Yeah, for sure. All right, we are in <clears throat> old hockey sticks. I bet there's going to be a lot of stuff to read in here. Honda apparently helped this area. Let's go check out what Honda did. Great name. Try it in. A legend. Bobby Orr, we're just in his hometown of Perry Sound. Nineteen seventy two Olympics against Russia or USSR. <clears throat> they even have like QR codes so you can actually watch the winning goal on your phone. Very cool. Unbelievable amount of history in this room. Wow. Interactive games. This room is amazing. So this is the inside of the bank. There's that front door. Beautiful woodwork. Fully restored. And of course all the trophies. And the piece de resistance. The Stanley Cup. It's very cool. We apparently get to go up and touch it. Where is the lease on there? 66. 66, 67. Last, that, last Stanley Cup. Right there, people. <laughs> Check it out. I was born 66, so yeah? I was like a month old, maybe two months old. You were what? alive for the cup. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 67. Right? 66, 67. I was one. It's beautiful. How heavy is it? Uh, 34 and a half pounds. 34 and a half pounds. It doesn't seem that, is it? Like, that's not too bad. Yeah. Like, the 50s Habs Beautiful. left it like, on, a, on like, a hill or something. Oh, did they? They were like, all drunk oh, up on a hill no. and then they just like, drove away. And oh. they just left it there. That's beautiful. Yeah. So that was very cool. That was one thing I never thought. I, wasn't, I, I never knew that you could actually go up and touch the cup. I thought it was going to be behind glass, like the Mona Lisa. But uh, apparently, one of the guys I knew, Mike Bolt, 
who I went to school with at Pickering College with Jose. He was in my grade, and uh, he apparently either works for the Hockey Hall of Fame or is responsible for the cup being transported. I can't remember what his role is, but he has something to do with the Stanley Cup and the Hockey Hall of Fame, which is very cool. I'm so glad I came down here, people. And here is the old safe from the bank, and they've turned it into a little bit of a hockey safe. I don't like going into vaults. I always think that somebody's going to lock me in. <clears throat> and you're done. So it looks like they took out most of the... Well, pretty much everything. Well, it looks like that was probably one safe, two safes, and then they cut them here and here to make it into one room as opposed to two small safes. Miniature Stanley Cup. We got a puck. Original Stanley Cup, 1893. Wow, Challenge Cup. Toronto Maple Leafs. 1951. This room's pretty neat. They made it look like a change room. With all the sweaters. Montreal Canadiens. Patrick Waugh, Dryden, Le Fleur. That is very, very cool. We even have a seat here from the Montreal Forum. Paul has, uh, I think, three sets of seats at the Tickle Toad. Uh, one of them is right by the front door, and then two of them are up on the rafters at the Tickle Toad. You'll have to ask Paul which ones he has, but he's got three from different stadiums that were torn down. This part is obviously sponsored by Tim Hortons and then TSN Theater. I'm gonna go check out the theater. Just one, thank you, sir. 3D theater. I love 3D. That movie Hi. is a total recommend. So if you come down to the Hockey Hall of Fame, make sure you do the, uh, the 3D movie. That's good. Well done. Here's another interactive game. Very old cards, toys, lunch boxes, cups, hats. It never ends. A broadcaster's booth. So you can be a goalie too. It's like a uh, very foamy type puck so you don't get nailed in the head. And so ends the Hockey Hall of Fame tour. I hope you enjoyed it. So I was just on my way back to my car and this whole area has got music and they got tents everywhere, food everywhere, fresh fruit and vegetables and then there's a booth over there that has like cookies and brownies and they're huge. And this place is off the grill. The smell of the smoke coming off this booth. I think I'm gonna go for the Texas Banquet Burger with black bacon and cheese. Hello. How are you? All right, how are you doing? A little hot today, but I'm not complaining because the last two weeks have been raining, so. Oh, good. I'm gonna do your, uh, the big one, the, the Texas bar, uh, Banquet the Burger bank with cheese and the Coke. And the Coke, so it's $10 even? Oh, 10 bucks. I can go wrong. Nice line up there, I guess. Yeah, the girls will make it up. Okay. So, like, right now, do you document how you made the print? Nope, just hungry and want to videotape it. <laughs> what are you getting? A burger? Yeah. Uh, the banquet burger with uh, the bacon and cheese. The whole bit. With white or whole bit? White, please. White? Yes, please. You're awesome. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, there you go. Like, the last few weeks were dead and, like... Looks good, ladies. There you go. Nice. Thank you. Well, I found a little place over here by myself. The music's way back there. Involved. Look at that cheese already melted. Pinot bacon. The uh, 
burger doesn't look as big as it does in the picture or the meat patty. But anyway, so I got a Coke in that. I'll eat that up and then uh, we'll head home. That banquet burger with cheddar cheese was, uh, I'll go out and get it now. Give him a shot, 10 bucks for that and a, and a Coke. I'm totally full, couldn't possibly eat anything else. Oh, and I got the burps now. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed today's vlog and we will see you again tomorrow.